card, which is well hidden in mine. Wow, okay. Here it is. This is your opportunity to communicate back to us what God is telling you this morning. He is speaking to you. Listen, He's speaking to you in the prayers, in the hymns, in the Word, in His message. Whatever He's telling you, you want to communicate back to us, but it's on the card. Give us as much contact information as you feel comfortable sharing with us. Otherwise, your uh, name and your email address is fine, particularly if you filled one of these out before. And then at the end of the worship service, you can put in the offering plate on your way out. And there will be a time during the following the message when you can meditate on God, on what God is telling you. You can write down, and you can pull it out any time and write down what God is telling you, what a decision that you're making, a prayer request, whatever it is. Pray with me. 
Thank you, Lord, for the refreshing rain, for the seasons, for the beauty of the earth around us. I pray, Lord, that you help us to focus on you this morning, clear our minds and our hearts, and let us get a fresh vision of you. For we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Continue singing the church's one foundation. Excuses, propaganda, spin. He hates exaggerations, half truths, hypocrisy, saving face. He hates falsehoods, shading the truth, misrepresentation, perjury. He hates false advertising, 
He hates embellishment. He hates lies. Lying is the devil's language. And we ally ourselves with him when we lie. It tells in the Bible that he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he's a liar and the father of it. In fact, the first time we see Satan in the Bible, in Genesis, he's lying. You know how you can tell if Satan is lying, right? His lips are moving. <laughs> God hates a false witness because he hates injustice. Evil people lie to others in order to accomplish their goals. Evil people lie to themselves in order to rationalize their behavior. It's no coincidence that Jesus called Satan the father of lies. By contrast, Jesus said, I am the truth. Lying is a serious thing. It really is. It's hard to believe because almost half Americans believe that lying is okay in some circumstances. I remember when President Clinton was impeached for lying. My friends, well, I don't know if they were my friends, or guys I work with, they said, of course he lied. Who wouldn't lie in a situation like that? Hmm. There's a problem with lying. Is that if you're going to lie about one thing, you're going to lie about other things, aren't you? There's always a time in TV, dramas, you guys know I love to watch these cop shows, especially Law and Order. You get cops and you get lawyers. And the, and the guy's on the stand and finally this person comes clean. Now we're going to tell the truth. Well, you lied before and you're telling the truth now? How do we know that? How do we know that you weren't telling the truth before and now you're lying? How are we supposed to discern that? That's what happens when you lie. But yet... Half Americans say it's okay to lie in some circumstances. You know, there's a little trick that the FBI has. They will call you in on something. And because the FBI has got you, you might be one of the clever super criminals that cover your tracks so carefully. But then they keep asking you questions upon question upon question, and they catch you in a lie. And they charge you with lying to the FBI. If you watch the early morning news, you learn that, wow, that's a serious thing. Lying to the FBI is worse than lying to anybody else. And so they charge you with that, and you wind up going to jail. There's so many politicians and people out there that got into trouble because that's how they got caught lying to the FBI. It seems that lying is a bad thing. So maybe we can say that God and the FBI hates lying. The worst kind of lie is a deliberate attempt to hurt someone. Lying can be cruel. That kind of lie can be destructive, it ruins lives, reputations are lost. Jealousy, revenge, hurt, resentment leads to these kind of lies. And of course, as we learned last week, pride is behind this kind of thing. You remember the story of Potiphar's wife? Joseph, this young, strapping young um, man, he's Potiphar's wife desires him. And Joseph says, I can't do this to my boss. Get away from me, you evil woman. <laughs> and she lied out of revenge, out of resentment, out of hurt. She said that Joseph tried to force himself upon her. 
And Joseph was thrown in jail for many years. I know it turned out okay for Joseph later, but nobody wants to go to jail in the meantime, right? Destroyed. And I'm sure she wasn't the first one that said such a thing, made such a lie, such an accusation. And I know she wasn't the last. You know, lying can also be cowardly. You lie to escape the consequences of your actions. The dog ate my homework. <laughs> That's why you're supposed to save it. I don't know if you can use that excuse anymore. The dog ate my homework. The motivation behind this, the behind this kind of lie is fear. You're afraid of the consequences. And this is the kind of lie that a lot of people say, well, it's okay. Abraham lied to Pharaoh about Sarah, saying that Sarah was Abraham's sister and not his wife because he was, Abraham was afraid they would kill him and take his wife. You know who wasn't okay with that? God was not okay with that. You know, sometimes... You can tell a cowardly lie when you're a soldier and you're taken by the enemy and they start to question you and you're afraid of being tortured or killed or look that funny or something. I don't know what they do. But we're trained. Do not lie. Do not tell a lie. They will catch you and whatever you thought was going to happen is going to be worse. Hold out for a while and then tell the truth. You hold out for a while because then the truth will be immaterial. But there's even in a case like that, lying is a mistake. So lying can be cowardly and it can be cruel. It can also be conceited. You lie to impress. You puff up your resume. You brag about the fish that you caught. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Ananias and Sapphira lied that way. They were padding their resume. They gave away some, they sold some property and they told the congregation that they had given all the money to the church for the poor. And they were lying. They kept some back. Did I tell you God hates lies? They both were struck dead for lying to the Holy Spirit, lying to the congregation. Lies can be serious stuff. When the truth gets stretched, it damages relationships. You lie enough, and after a while, people will not be able to believe anything you say. Sometimes exaggeration come a little bit too easy for us, can't it? You know, I've got to catch myself, I really do. I start telling a story and every time I tell it, it gets a little bit better. I think I have to write it down so I can remember exactly what happened. The fish gets a little bit bigger, you know, that one foot fish. Okay, so it was only 11 inches, right? It's just an inch, but then it becomes a foot and a half. Pretty soon, there were so many fish I needed help to haul them on the boat. You know, preachers aren't immune, I'm afraid, to this kind of stuff. There was a bunch of boys gathered around this scraggly dog one time, and the preacher came up to see, what's going on here, boys? They said, well... Preacher, we're having a lion competition here. A what? Lion? No, lying. Whoever tells the biggest lie gets to take the dog home. Preacher shook his head and said, Boys, when I was your age, I never even thought about lying. Tears come to one little boy's eyes. He says, Okay, preacher, it looks like you win. <laughs>
Sometimes lying seems a little innocent. There's a congressman today serving who lied on his resume. Not a little bit. <clears throat> a lot. I don't think there was a thing on his resume that's true. He lied about his schooling, his experience, everything. And yet he's still serving in Congress. The other representatives don't want to work with him. Folks, how bad a liar do you have to be that other politicians shun you? <laughs> it's crazy that he's still there. Lying can be calculated. You lie to manipulate others. Con men use these kind of lies all the time. So when you've got a, a congressman over there who has lied to get to his office, what else is he going to do? You know, when you're a politician, there's all kinds of temptations to lie because of greed. I mean, how many times can you turn down those bribes, right? They just keep getting bigger and bigger. How many times can you compromise or, or refuse to compromise to get what you've done? So, but you lie to manipulate others motivated by greed, by selfishness? Jacob lied to his blind father in order to steal his brother's blessing and inheritance. Have you ever stopped to think about that? We just gloss over that. Okay, Jacob, yada, 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 he begot this, he begot that. Jacob deceived his own father. His own father to steal a blessing from his own brother. Sounds like Dallas, doesn't it? Remember that TV show, Dallas? I'm sorry, I guess I'm showing my age here. <laughs> All right. Sometimes lying is just convenient. We want to save face. We want to get out of a jam. We want to dodge a bullet. Get off the hot seat. But you know, lies don't come in colors. There's no such thing as a white lie. People who tell white lies might just be colorblind. And sometimes lies are funny. You know, since I've already revealed my age, I'll talk about I Love Lucy. You still watch that all the time. Not when it was, you know, new and on the air. The reruns, so I got to see that every afternoon. And it seems like in every show, Lucy was lying to Ricky. Every single show, Lucy was lying to Ricky. And it was funny, it always worked out differently than what Lucy expected. It's funny on TV that in real life, feelings are wounded. Trust is eroded. Relationships are cheapened. Well, I was going to say, I don't know how Ricky and Lucy stayed married with all the lies, but the reality is they didn't stay married. And the reality was there was a lot of lies there, but they were all on Ricky's part. How do we get to this thing, this line? You know, the news media lies. They really do. I know we talk about fake news and we think that fake news is, the idea of fake news is fake. Now, I expect CNN and Fox News to spin things. That's what they're there for. That's their job. Everybody knows that. They know that. They may say they don't, but they do. And so they put a little spin on this, a little spin on that, and maybe a lie might seep through here and there. You have to understand that the news, no matter what it is, when they tell the absolute truth, they chose what story to run. And so they can just ignore stories that doesn't uh, keep their narrative mo moving and put a spotlight on the story that agrees with them. 
But when we talk about the real news, let's say, ABC, CBS, NBC, the New York Times, the, what is it they call it, the, the story of record or something like that, they've been caught in lies. They have been caught. And there's no consequences. None whatsoever. Some New York Times writer had made up a whole bunch of stuff, got caught. You think that would shut the paper down? Why would anybody read that? If one person lies, wouldn't another person lie? We heard stories about uh, reporters that said they were somewhere when they weren't. You know, real war heroes and stuff like that. That's what it's come to. You know, okay, Lucy lying to Ricky. That's meant to be funny, and we're, we know she's lying. They let us in on the secret. But when the news media lies, exaggerates. Folks, said, I'm not talking about just picking a story. I'm talking about a major TV news channel. Well, that wasn't their fault. Sometimes we rush to news. But somebody gets murdered and they want to make a deal out of this or get shot and they put a picture of an 18 year old but they put a picture of him when he was 14. Folks, the cuteness of a 14 year old wears off over the years. Somebody forged a letter attributed to a presidential candidate and posted it like news. And they were caught by a blogger, by a citizen journalist, who said that this was not a real letter. But they had already published it and made a news story out of it. You know why these things happen, right? Why a reputable news agency would get caught or, or would, get, yeah, would get caught up in a lie like that? Money. Not truth. Money. They sell advertising. And because they sell advertising, they got cut up, caught up in the lie, whether they made the lie up or not. I do remember there was a 911 tape that was edited by a news person in the studio. They cut out a chunk of it and they put it together in such a way that made the person that was uh, making the 911 call look bad. Folks, that's just about criminal. Maybe it is criminal, but he didn't get charged with anything criminal. How do we get to the point where lying is okay? I don't know, but I know there is a cure for lying. Jesus said that whatever's in your heart comes out of your mouth. And so, when lying comes easy, Maybe a liar needs a heart transplant. God will put a new heart in you. He will take away your heart of stone. Jesus can do a heart transplant today without anesthesia. Don't worry, it doesn't hurt. The only part that hurts is leaving away your old life and your sin. And sometimes leaving your sin behind can hurt. The Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He can change you from the inside out if you let him. You know, and sometimes other people's lives don't hurt us if we don't let them. I know that one of the crazy things about con games is that people that get conned often get conned because they, they're greedy. The other day, I, I know you, you probably, so I'm, I'm giving you a warning, be careful. Because I thought I was going to be a millionaire. This Egyptian prince, or maybe it was a uh, Kenyan prince, I don't know. Some kind of prince or a widow, I can't remember who it was, had gotten all this money that she needed to sneak out of the country. Sneak money out of the country, isn't that illegal? I think it's illegal. Why else would she want me to do that? She was going to share it with me. All I had to do was open up a bank account. You know, not, she didn't want my information. She wanted me to open up a bank account with no money in it, and she was going to deposit the money in there. 
Well, you know, I didn't tell Tracy. Now, this is going to be my money, right? I wasn't even going to really tithe it. I was going to take a little bit in cash and kind of leave it in the envelope so nobody knew that I got all this money. You see how these cons work? They work on your greed. And by the way, in case you don't know what the con is, they deposit, something happens, they take money, anyway, they disappear and you get left holding the bag because a bounce check or some weird thing happens, but somehow you lose. But you realize that they have to make you willing to break the law, to believe this lie. I don't know. I've, I've heard a long time ago, before we had the internet even, <clears throat> that you should only believe a fraction of what you hear. And even less of what you see. Sometimes when we get caught in lies, it's due a little bit to our own gullibility. <coughs> it tells us in Ephesians, you did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught in regard to the former way of life to put off your old self which is being corrupted by deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbors because we all are members of one body. In Colossians it says, do not lie to each other since you have taken off your own self with its practices. When we, to, to tell lies is to become a child of Satan, to identify with him. To tell the truth is to identify with Jesus. There is no shadow of turning in him, the Bible tells us. When asked how old your daughter is, a woman said, she's 24. Well, that was odd. Later on, the daughter says, Mom, I'm 35. I know, but I've been lying about my age for so long that I had to start lying about yours. <laughs> Liars lie. Liars lie. And it's not a good thing. Remember I told you about getting captured by the enemy? We're told not to lie. Because we're not going to remember the lie that we told. It doesn't pay. Now I know every once in a while we're going to get tripped up with lies. We are. We, we're human. We sin, pride, fear, all manner of things cause us to want to lie. But God hates that. You need to remember that God hates that. He hates you selling a car and trying to alter the, the odometer by a little bit or whatever it is that you're doing. Today, you can renounce all lies. You can renounce the father of lies and turn your heart toward Jesus and live in the truth. Walk in that abundant life that he promised. We're going to listen to a song of worship now as you pull out your communication card and ponder what God is telling you right now.
us listen to your call. Help us obey your voice. Help us to walk closer and closer with you. For this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to sing one more verse. Come, if God is calling you.